Hey, good day, folks. Welcome to another episode of Andrew's Life. Uh, welcome to Albany, Georgia. Now, this video is going to be full of information about Albany. I'm going to try as hard as I can to get it on this video. Now, the information I got about this city, there's more information, but for the sake of timing, I just went through and got the pieces of information that I believe would be the most interesting pieces of information for you viewers out here. So again, welcome to Albany, Georgia, located in uh, Dog, Dog, Doggerty County, Doggerty, Doggerty County. Uh, Albany is located in Southwest Georgia on the Flint River. And it is an hour and 41 minutes from Macon, Georgia, and an hour and a half from Columbus, Georgia. So there's no major metro areas real close to Albany. Now the population of Albany is 70,748 people. And this city has lost 3% of its population as of the 2020 census. Now, if you want to live in Albany, housing prices are relatively affordable. The median home price is $121,000. And there's houses for sale for as low as $15,000. So, if you don't mind living in the hood, or if you don't mind buying a fixer-upper, there's houses for sale for as low as fifteen dollars Now, I would say if you're looking to live in a better part of the city, then you're gonna probably wanna stick closer to the median home price. Now the median rent price, <clears throat> if you're looking just to rent, it's gonna be $780 to $1,500 a month. And I keep forgetting to do this, so I'm gonna do this real quick. I gotta calculate the crime data here. I wrote the numbers down, but uh, I forgot to calculate it on my calculator, so I'm gonna do that real quick. So give me a second. Okay, as far as it goes for the violent crime, I mean, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, crime here is fairly high. Your violent crime rate is gonna be uh, over double the national average. It's gonna be well over double the national average. And now let's type in the property crime. Okay, for property crime, property crime is going to be a little over double the national average as well. So crime in this city is very high. This city clearly has a crime issue. And as far as it goes for the racial demographics, uh, you got 22.2% white, 72.5% black, 2.4% Hispanic. Those are the biggest three racial groups that live in the city. And as you guys see footage of this city, I mean, I do show you guys areas of the city that I perceive to be, quote unquote, a little better than other areas of the city. Now, although many of you are going to look at this, so for those of you that are not familiar with Albany, Georgia, I mean, granted, you, you're probably thinking, okay, this city doesn't look like a whole lot. But as I go as I go on through the, out the duration of this video, uh, this city has a lot more going than what you think, and I'm not necessarily talking in a bad way. So anyhow, let me continue. Now Albany, Georgia, is also a part of the Black Belt region of the South. Now. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I didn't know that 
uh, I didn't know that the black belt was in Georgia. I always assumed that the black belt was in Alabama, but apparently it's in Georgia too. So I learned some, I learned something new every day. This region of Georgia received military investments during World War II, and after that, World War II and after, that helped the development of this city. So there was a time when this city was actually doing well, and things were on the up and up. Now later, the city experienced job loss, experienced job losses due to the reduction in the military in World War, and due to the reduction, due to, re, so basically, due to the military, ba, due to the Air Force military base closing down, which I'll get, I'll elaborate a little bit on that a little later here, but due to the Air Force military base closing down, and the work and the railroad restructuring that was happening nationwide at the time there has been a significant job losses in this area a lot of active a lot of active a lot of activism went on during the 1960s you know for the civil rights and voting rights of african americans so there were a lot of activists during that time, you know, they were a part of the civil rights and they're also fighting for voting rights of African Americans. Albany, Albany was inhabited by the Creek Indians. They used the minerals found in the beds of, in, in the beds near Flint River to make arrowheads and other tools. In 1830, Congress passed the Indian Removal Act. Then the U.S. Army removed most of the Indian, most of the natives at that time to Indian territories. Now, once the Indians were removed from the, you know, were removed from Albany. I mean, this was before Albany was called Albany, but you guys know what I'm saying. European Americans began to settle along the land of, along the land on Flint River in October of 1836 after the Indian removal. Now, Nelson uh, Tift the first European settler along <coughs> with his colleagues named this new city Albany. And this city was named after Albany, New York, hoping that Albany, Georgia would achieve the same success as Albany, New York in commercial development. Noting that both Albany Noting that both Albany's were by a river, Albany, New York being by the Hudson, Hudson River, and of course Albany, Georgia being by Flint River. Unfortunately, Albany, Georgia didn't achieve the success of Albany, New York. Tift was Albany, Georgia's leading entrepreneur for decades, who promoted education, business, and railroad construction, along with promoting segregation, slavery, and opposing racial radical reconstruction. By 1840, most of, uh, da, da, ter, no, da, I can't pronounce it, but by 1840, most of the county in which Albany is located within was was black or slash African American due to the slaves working the cotton fields in the area. Albany was a prime location for cotton shipping by steamboats, given that the city was located by the river. Now, 
And then in 1960, the city's population was at 50,000 people. During 1961 to 1962, African Americans in the city took part in the civil rights movement and fought for desegregation using nonviolent measures. The city repealed its Jim Crow law in 1963, but the African American residents were not able to exercise voting rights until the 1965 Voting Rights Act was passed. And then in 1967, the Air Force base closed, the, Air Fo the, the, the United States Air Force closed its base in Albany. In 1974, the land was returned to the city. In 1979, Miller Brewing Company built a brewery on the old Air, Air Force base. Now, once the job losses began due to the closing of the Air Force base and railroad restructuring with Tappanace and Rod, much of the white population moved to nearby towns and Albany became predominantly African American as of the 1970s. A little bit of history of why Albany is predominantly black today and also a little bit of history of why the city is in the condition that it's in. Now is there work that can be done by the people of this community? Of course there are. Because I also do believe in self-responsibility. But I can't sit here and discuss self-responsibility without first discussing some history of what happened to this city, of how this city got to be the way it is today. Now, in 1988, which was, of course, during the crack era, Albany was known as murder capital of America due to the highest deletion rate in the country at the time. Now, for those of you that truly want to know more about the crack era, I suggest that you do some research about the crack era. I mean, I can't really go too much into detail on this channel about it because it's not a political channel. So I try to stay away from politics as much as possible. But, you know, it's important that when you drive, when you visit cities like this, or when I record cities like this, I mean, rather than me just coming out and saying, oh man, this city's ghetto is hood, you know, blah, 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 this and that and the third. I mean, I believe out of, uh, I mean, I believe, I mean, just to be fair, I believe that the history of how this city got to be the way it is today, it's important that that history is mentioned. So onwards, 14 people lost their lives and 22,000 people were displaced due to the tropical storm Alberto in 1994. On the, first, on the 2nd of January of 2017 and the 22nd of January of the same year, violent tornadoes hit the area, claiming several lives, destroying mobile homes, mobile home parks. And on the 10th of October of 2018, Hurricane Michael, the first hurricane of this type in the state of Georgia, apparently, hit South Georgia, causing significant property damage and many injuries. Now, they didn't mention whether anyone uh, got their lives lost during that time, but they, they did mention property damage and injuries. Now, if you're wanting to move to the city of Albany or nearby, 
your, I mean, obviously the city's not that big. So the economy here is definitely not going to be the strongest. If you want a place that has a stronger economy, then you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to move somewhere a little closer to one of the metros in Georgia, like maybe, you know, like Columbus, even Macon, Augusta, or Savannah, you know, you get the idea. But if you want to live around here, the largest employers here are going the largest employers here are gonna be in healthcare, education, and the Marine Corps logistic base, which is also here in Albany, and as well as manufacturing, retail and transportation work. Now, unfortunately, there were 1,400 jobs that were lost during the closing of Cooper Tire in 2008, allegedly. Now, it's, now, the, uh, now, one of the reasons why there's so many jobs available in education is because here in Albany, you go Albany State University. And it's also the home of Albany Tech College, Georgia Military College, and Troy University. And as far as activities that the city, that, that's available in the city at certain times of the year, you got, you got the Mardi Gras Street Festival in downtown Albany during the first week of March from noon to midnight. And apparently this city does have public transportation. Now, when I was here recording this video, which was on a Sunday, I did not see any signs of public transportation. But apparently Albany Transit System, or other words known as the ATS, they've been operating since 1974 here in Albany. It, you know, it's and their buses apparently have bike racks in front of the bus. So you can ride your bike to the bus stop, put your bike in front of the bus, and then jump on the bus. Now, a few people that have done big things in their life that are from this city are Alice Coachman, the first African-American woman to win a Olympic gold medal in the 1940s she lived from the 9th she, she lived from November 9th of 1923 to July 14th of 2014 and I'm, I'm pretty sure most of you know who Paula Dean is now for those of you that know who Paula Dean is I'm fairly sure that many of you can remember the controversial the controversial uh, I guess scandal that went on with her I mean if I can remember clearly she said something inappropriate to or about black people I mean I forgot exactly how it went but I'm pretty sure many of you can remember that, that I'm gonna call it a scandal but Paula Dean what well, is base was Paula Dean had a cook show. I don't know if she still has it today. I don't really watch television no more like that. But this is Paula Dean's home. She's from here. And then you got Field Mob. For those of you that listen to Southern Hip Hop. If you listen to Southern Hip Hop during the early 2000s. Uh, Field Mob came out in 2002. Now, one of their first hit singles were Sick and Tired of Being Lonely. And of course, he worked with many different rap artists. And around the mid-2000s, mid he signed, you know, Ludacris, another hip-hop artist, signed Phil Mob on. And then in the late 2000s, uh, Ludacris and Phil Mob had a fallout. And ever since then, Phil Mob's career was not the same as it used to be beforehand. So that's a little brief story of Phil Mob. 
which they're from here. And then you got Burt Stevens Oates, a five-time NFL pro baller and a three-time Super Bowl champion. And then you got McCree Harris, an activist for the Albany movement. If you don't know what that is, then go ahead and look it up. And then you got Alex and Stephen Kendrick, the co-founders of Sherwood Pictures and Kendrick Brothers. They're also actors. And then you got Philip Phillips. Now, for those of you that watch American Idol, if you can remember back on the 11th season of American Idol, Philip Phillips was the seat was the show's winner for the 11th season. And as far as some stuff to do in this city, and again, I didn't go, I didn't write, I didn't write down everything. I just wrote down some of the things that I thought would be the most interesting. You got the Chi Hall Parking Zoo. You got the Ray Charles Plaza. You got the Flint River Aquarium, the Albany Civil Rights Institute, the Albany Museum of Art, the Craft slash Axe Thorn. They, you know, that's what the place is called. And I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think that place is close to downtown. Then you have the All-American Fun Park, which is basically a game and entertainment uh, facility. I mean, arcade games, that type, of, that type of stuff. And then you got the Adventure Dive Center Tech. And at this facility, they offer scuba diving classes for both beginners and advanced students. And assuming that you already know what you're doing, you can go there and rent out scuba gear along with tanks and do your thing there. Then you got the Flint River Outpost, which basically you can go kayaking and canoeing there. And you got the kayak Attack Adventures. I think that's self-explanatory what you do there. So, there's a fair amount of outdoor activities in this city. And there's also a fair amount of things to do to keep one busy. If you were to visit here or if you were to move here. Now, me personally, uh, would I move to this city? No, I wouldn't. And I'm going to tell you guys why. The reason why I personally wouldn't want to move here is because, number one, it's way too far away from larger metro areas. And number two, I prefer to live in a city where the crime is lower. But would I come here to visit and partake in some of the entertainment here all day? So that's my two cents about the city. Now I thought that it would, it would have took me a little longer to read through all that, but I read through all that fairly quick. I just wanted to make sure that I covered all that during the video. I didn't want the video to end, and I'm still sitting here trying to read stuff. But typically when I do these type of videos, I like to say what I gotta say. I like to give you guys information about the city and then you guys can watch the remainder of the video in quiet and silence without any disturbances, without having to listen to my voice. I know a lot of you, when you watch these videos, you like to hear the sounds of the air, the sounds of me driving, whatever.
But yeah, I mean, uh, I don't really have any more to say. I mean, I gave you guys some general information. I said what I needed to say as far as how I feel about the city. I don't want to repeat myself. I don't want to make a habit of that. So on that note, I'm going to wish you guys a wonderful rest of the day, evening, whatever time of the day you watch the video. And you guys have a blessed one. You guys know what to do. Help me out. Subscribe to the channel. You can give this video and all my other videos you come across and watch some thumbs up to help with the YouTube algorithm. Oh, oh, and by the way, my apologies about what just happened a second ago. When I was driving recording, I hit a bump and didn't realize until the a uh, minute or two after the fact that my camera done got off track. Alright folks, I'm gonna holler at y'all. Y'all have a blessed one.